of cake that is becoming so popular at the moment is vintage inspired cakes that are covered with lots of different piping techniques. So in this week's video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how I created this really pretty, colorful, vintage inspired cake and how you can create one too. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna need in order to make our vintage piped cake is the cake itself. Now for this tutorial, I'm using a six inch cake and I've kept this one at around four inches in height just to really give it that vintage feel. Now I started off by filling, stacking and crumb coating my cake with this really pretty min jadey green color buttercream. Now for this buttercream, I combined some of the jade by Color Splash with a small hint of their blue, just to get this really pretty color. Once my cake had chilled in the fridge, I then used my acrylic discs to cover the outside with a final layer of buttercream and really smooth it down. Now, I do have a few video tutorials, one that shows you how I feel and cover my cakes in more detail, and also one that shows you how to use the acrylic discs. And I will put links to these in the corner of the screen and in the description below. I then chilled my cake in the fridge before removing that acrylic disc from the top, neatening up that top edge and transferring my cake onto a 10 inch matte white cake board. The cake is now ready for us to add all of our piped decoration. So the things that we're gonna need in order to add the detail onto the side of our cake is, first of all, I've got some piping bags. I've also got some buttercream. I've got some just standard normal buttercream that I have haven't added any color into. I've got a darker pink and a small amount of lighter pink along with a little bit of sage green. Now, if you were using the same color buttercream for all the decoration on your cake, another thing that might come in handy is to use some couplers. These just allow you to remove the piping tips and replace them with new ones without having to replace the bag of buttercream that you're using. I've also got a round cookie cutter and I will be going into why we need this in a lot more detail. Now, we're not gonna be using all of the these, but I do have a selection of piping tips to go through which ones will be the best ones to use and the different effects that you can create with each. Now, lastly, one thing that I've created is this template. So we have curves, circles, and lines. This is to enable you to practice your piping techniques before you add them onto the side of your cake. Now, I will put a link in the description below where you can download this template. I've just laminated mine so that I can wipe off any buttercream but you could also just place it under a piece of parchment paper or if you've got a clear document wallet you could place it inside this is just going to allow you to add your buttercream wipe it off and practice again the first technique that we're going to look at is creating a swag or a drape on the side of our cake so in order to do this you're going to need a piping tip that has a teardrop shape at the end now whichever piping tip you use it's going to create the same effect but by using a larger one you're going to get a larger drape and a smaller one is going to give you a smaller drape so just some examples i've got here i've got a 102 a 103 a 104 and a 124. So on the 124, you can just see that the opening is around a centimeter in width, and we've got a point at the top and this wider curve at the bottom. Now, if I bring in my template, you'll see that I've got these curves at the top. This is so that you can practice doing your drapes before you add them onto your cakes. So I'm gonna start by filling a piping bag with some of my buttercream. So I'm just snipping off the end, popping that piping it in and pulling it tight before using a glass to hold my piping bag still while I fill it with some buttercream. Okay, so for my first example, I'm just gonna show you how to create kind of a ruffled swag. So if we take our piping tip and we want that wider edge, if you imagine the piece of paper to be the side of your cake, you wanna have that close enough to the side of your cake that that buttercream can connect. I'm gonna hold a thinner tip just slightly upwards at around a 45 degree angle. And as I apply pressure, I'm gonna allow that buttercream to come out because we do have that piping tip slightly angled as that buttercream falls out, it's gonna create this really pretty ruffle effect. So I'm just gonna work that piping tip around following that curve, and this is gonna give us this really pretty ruffled swag. 
Now, the slower you go, the more ruffled it's gonna be. So if you do want it quite straight, you just wanna go a lot quicker. Now, if you wanted to create a swag that was slightly more ruched, what we want to do is hold our piping bag at a 90 degree angle. So still having that wider section at the bottom, but as I go, instead of pulling it round in one smooth motion, I'm gonna move the piping bag backwards and forwards. Not too much, just around half a centimeter as I go. So if we look at the two examples, this one sits more against the cake, whereas this one is gonna stand out. This one is also a great one to use along the edge of a cake. Now, piping buttercream borders is quite popular at the moment, but the thing that gives these a real vintage feel is layering up that piping. Now, I'll show you an example of this. So I've popped the 102 piping tip in my piping bag, and this is just a smaller version. Place this up against that one that we've already piped. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. So this is just gonna give us a double layered swag. So now we've practiced the swags, the next thing to do is to add them onto the side of our cake. So I've placed my cake onto my turntable and the first thing I want to do is add a template onto the side so I know where to pipe. So I'm gonna start with a tape measure. I'm just gonna measure around the circumference of my cake. So it's around 50 centimeters. I've then got a round cookie cutter. So this one just measures 10 centimeters along the middle. So I know that I can use this five times around the outside to give me a template. So I know where to push this into my cake. Pick some tape. Now this is just some surgical tape and it's not actually gonna touch my cake. And this is gonna give me a guide so that I know that the top of my cake has to run along the bottom. So I'm gonna start just by holding that round cookie cutter up against the edge and just pushing in lightly, just so I get a curve on the side of my cake, working my way around until I've got a template to follow. In my piping bag, I've got the 124 piping tip with some of that pink buttercream. Now I'm gonna be doing the first example that I showed you, so that ruffle swag which is touching the side of the cake. So I'm keeping the wider end of my piping tip against the side, raising the piping tip around 45 degrees and just working my way around that curve. Now just as I did in the example, I'm gonna add another row on top of this, but instead of the pink, I've added some of that normal color buttercream in with my 103 piping tip. I'm gonna bring the end of my piping bag just slightly higher than the edge of that previous row and I'm gonna pipe that little border, just following that round. And you can color your buttercream in any colors to match the theme of your cake. Now, another technique which looks so pretty against those ruffled, curved swags is just some curved lines of buttercream. And for this, you just want some piping tips that have small circle openings at the end. So I've got a number one, a number two, and a number three piping tip. So I'm gonna pop at the number three in a piping bag and show you how to do it. So if you imagine again that this curve is on the side of our cake, first of all, I'm gonna show you a way that you shouldn't do it. So what you might wanna do is just go around just following that curve. And this will give you a nice curve, but there's a way to get it a lot smoother. So if you connect the end of your piping bag against the side of your cake, pull my piping tip away from my cake, still applying pressure to allow that buttercream to come out. What I can then do is guide that piping tip around and just allow it to gently lay that buttercream along the side of the cake. This is gonna give you a lot smoother of a curve. So I've got the number three piping tip and I've popped this into a piping bag with some of that cream. I'm gonna be adding this effect from one corner to the other. So I'm gonna start applying pressure and just pull that piping bag away from my cake before pulling it around just to create that little arc. Now, before I move on to my next set of piping tips, I'm actually gonna go back to the 124. So the one that we used for the swags. And as I mentioned when I did the second example of these, this would look great around that top edge. With the point of my piping tip facing outwards, I'm gonna start piping just by going up and down. Now, if for any reason you need to stop, make sure you stop when the shape has come down. That way we can then just 
pick it back up again and I'm going to tuck the last one in. Now on a vintage style cake, one of the most iconic looking shapes that you can create is a piped shell. Now to do this you want to have an open star piping tip and just like with the others, the bigger the opening on the piping tip, the larger your shell is going to be. So here I've got the 1M. I've also got some smaller versions. So this is the number 22. This one actually has a few more teeth cut out, which is going to give you more texture to your shell. I've then got the 21 and some that are a lot smaller. So this is the 24 and also the 16, which has a really tiny opening. And there are so many different piping tips in between. This is just a small selection. Now, if we take the 1M and you can see how many teeth are cut out, this is gonna give you texture on the outside of your shell. Now, if you were to use something that had a lot more teeth cut out, so this is the 6B, or we've got the 195K, this is gonna give you more of a texture on the outside. But for a traditional looking shell, I'm gonna choose ones that have a slightly less teeth cut out. So I'm just starting by adding the number 21 into my piping bag. Now on my template, I've added in some lines and this is just gonna allow us to join our shells together and practice. I've also added a circle so you can practice working your way around as if you were going around the edge of a cake. For the shells, pipe out a ball of buttercream and then pull down. If I show you from the side, it's gonna create this little shell shape. To do the next one, we've got this tail that comes down. Start there just by applying pressure to allow a ball of that buttercream to come out before pulling down. So it's creating a shell or it also looks like a little wave. Now, if I pop in the 1M, this is a lot larger of a piping tip. I'll show you the difference. You can see that it's gonna give you a lot larger of a border. You can also see that it's got a few less teeth cut out. So we've got more of a textured design on the outside of the smaller one. Now to give you another example, this is the number 16. So this is the smallest one that I had. So this is gonna give you exactly the same effect, but it's so much smaller. So as I mentioned with the circle, you can just practice working your way around as if you were doing it on the side of a cake. Once you've gone all the way around and we've got to the end, all I'm gonna do is just pipe in a ball of buttercream just to close up that gap. So with that number 21 and the pink in my piping bag, I'm gonna create a row of shells along the bottom. Now along the top, just on top of this border that we've added, I'm gonna do exactly the same, but instead of using the pink, I'm gonna use the cream. Now we've added all of that onto the cake. The last thing I'm gonna add is some tiny little roses. For this, I'm gonna be using this closed star piping tip. So as you can see, all the points come over and meet in the middle. Now, this is the number 34, but in some brands, it is also known as the number 35. Now, this is gonna create the main part of my rose, and I'm also gonna be using the 352, and this one has a V cutout. So this is gonna allow me to create some little leaves. So I've got some light pink for the roses and the sage green for the leaves. So if I bring back in my template, I'm just going to do it in this empty space, starting in the center and just bringing our piping tip round to do one rotation. Once we've got a circle where they're going to keep bringing it round, just hugging the side. Once it's got to the size that you want, we're going to stop applying pressure and just pull away. We're then going to go in on the side and you want to keep the cutout of the V on the side, so we've got the point at the top. I'm gonna to tuck that in and just pull out a little leaf. So I'm just gonna pop a few of these around the side of my cake. So I'm gonna start on these points just to neaten those up where all of this buttercream meets. I'm almost done. All I wanna do is neaten up the inside of my cake. So I've got one of the smaller open star piping tips. So this is the number 24. And I'm just gonna go in and pipe a shell border on the inside. 
So there we've got our vintage inspired piped buttercream cake and you can use any of these techniques to create different effects depending on how you want your cake to look. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and you'll be able to use some of these techniques on the sides of your own cake. If you have enjoyed the video as always don't forget to give it a like and if you haven't already then don't forget you can subscribe to the Cakes Planning YouTube channel for more videos like this. You can also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will just alert you every time we upload a new video. Now I will put a list of all the tools that I've used in today's video in the description below so you can find those there. But until next time, bye!